Well, the ex-president and current Republican nominee is doubling down on his endorsement of Larry Hogan for Senate in Maryland. Yes, last night, Donald Trump told Newsmax that he'd rather have Hogan in office than a Democrat. Well, that comment came after Hogan's team tried to put some distance between him and the ex-president, saying he will not support Donald Trump's White House bid. Hogan's Democratic opponent, Angela Alsobrooks, said this in response. The stakes of this race could not get any higher. Just last week, Senate Republicans shot down access to contraception. Hours ago, Senate Republicans voted against protecting IVF. And just now, Donald Trump endorsed Larry Hogan so he can have a Republican majority. Well, the Democratic nominee for Maryland's open Senate seat, Angela Alsobrooks, joins us now. Greetings, greetings, greetings to you, Madam Good morning. Kelly. We, this is the Maryland corner. Let's yeah, this go is ahead the and Maryland address side. it today. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Even more specifically, yeah. Prince George's County. This is exactly, house, this, right? is this is right. This, this is, is absolutely right. right. So, um, Larry Hogan has been out and about making the case that, you know, the Republicans can't count on his vote, the Democrats can't count on his vote either. He will be a voice for Maryland. What say you? Well, Mitch McConnell invited Larry Hogan into the race. Uh, they both said this, and in fact, uh, Mitch McConnell said this was the get of the year. Um, and what we know is that Larry Hogan, Mitch McConnell, and now Donald Trump share a goal. And the goal is they want to take over the Senate uh, and have a majority in the Senate for Republicans. And what we know about that, as I've mentioned from last week, is that we've already seen what that looks like. Just this week, voting against really codifying in, in federal law, IVF, the right to it, contraception last week. Um, and so they share a vision uh, for the state of Maryland and for the country that I have to tell you is in, in opposite of most Marylanders. It, it, it's going to be a very interesting and dynamic race. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, the, the, the reality for Democrats and Republicans is that the Senate's going to look very different. Mitch McConnell will not be there uh, come January 2025. There will be a new leadership there. But closer back, closer to home, this race is going to is still going to be a competitive race. I've seen mm -hmm. polling where you're slightly ahead. I've seen polling where Larry's ahead. Uh, among among your own constituencies, Larry is polling about 70 percent approval among Democrats in the state statewide. Mm -hmm. um, so the challenge is uh, he was a good governor. Mm -hmm. He won as a Republican twice in a blue state where he's out number two to one. How do you, beyond the messaging on abortion, um, also message against a, a governor uh, who was effective in his leadership um, and had support of a lot of the people who support you? Well, you know what? I think Marylanders recognize the race is much larger than Larry Hogan. And, uh, and as you've mentioned, people know that, that he was a good, people liked him as governor. Mm -hmm. Some people did. And what we know is that governor is very different than Senate. We also know, as you mentioned, that Mitch McConnell may not be the Senate majority leader, but we are concerned that Lindsey Graham could very well be chair of judiciary. And all of us recognize what that would mean um, if we were to, again, allow another justice on the Supreme Court, a conservative justice. And we know absolutely that Larry Hogan would be voting with the Republican caucus when questioned about Do this. Do you really? Few, well, just a few I, months I, ago, I, taken Larry in his... doesn't strike me as a go-along-to-get-along guy. Well, taken in his own words. Let's just take him for his, his word. He said a couple of months ago, in response to a question, will you vote with the Republican caucus, he said, absolutely. I am a lifelong Republican, and he is. Um, and so we recognize that he will be voting on issues that are of concern to us, including, I don't have any doubt that Larry Hogan would vote to confirm another conservative Supreme Court justice. And we know that where sensible gun legislation is concerned, where, again, a woman's right to choose is concerned, we already know that he would be voting in many instances in ways that again, would be opposite of what, what Marylanders believe. So, so it is of concern. So nobody has to be convinced that Larry Hogan um, is not a good person. I like Larry Hogan. I worked well with him as county executive. We, this election is about the future. The vision we have, whether or not my daughter at 19 will have to decide where to live in the country based on where she might have rights, uh, is a real issue. It is a very serious issue. When I talk to young people who are concerned about this economy and asking whether or not they can afford to buy a home, or whether or not they will be able to, to just really have the basic necessities of life. It is about the future and which vision of it uh, should control. And I believe that the Senate should remain blue. 
uh, that the vision for our state and for our country is one that, that is shared by, by um, Democrats in, in Maryland. The stakes you lay out specifically as it relates to the Supreme Court brought into stark relief just this past week. This is what Vice President Harris had to say about their ruling on bump stocks. Quote, today's Supreme Court ruling rolls back progress by striking down a common sense gun safety regulation. It also underscores the stakes this November. Trump says we need to get over mass shootings and I will bow down and will bow down to the gun lobby. Joe Biden and I fought to pass the most significant gun safety legislation in nearly 30 years. We support an assault weapons ban and red flag laws. I wonder, beyond repro rights, um, beyond this question of gun safety, what you see as the stakes of this coming election? Oh, my gosh. The stakes couldn't be any higher, just in the instance you, you brought up, where the Supreme Court struck down a ban uh, on bump stocks. We, again, are looking at an epidemic in our country around gun violence that has spread all across the country. There really is no space in the country that is safe um, against this violence that we've seen. And even so, we have a conservative court, which, again, we know that if we allow the Republicans to take over and to have a majority, they would appoint more conservative justices where we might see legislation such as that. Um, and so, you know, in so many different areas, we know there just really could not be more stake. Again, it's, it is a choice. But many other issues also. Um, just the vision that we have, we saw this Republican uh, Party where we had sensible gun le uh, immigration legislation, mm -hmm. bipartisan legislation that everyone had agreed on. And really, it's signaling of D Donald Trump who said, I don't want a solution. I want a crisis, that I believe this is in the best interest of, of, of my reelection, that we shouldn't have a solution to this issue. We should have a crisis. We can't afford more of, of that a kind of inertia. Uh, and moving backwards, we want to move forward. And again, we want a future uh, that the vision for the future is one that we just disagree about. How do you handle um, in in the in the race? I, I, it, uh, what I love about the dynamic is you mentioned Larry being you know governor running for the Senate uh, is different. Well, it's since different for you too. You're you were county executive uh, of a county of 800 plus thousand people um, with. Um, local issues that get touched on uh, by federal policy, and guns being one. How, how have you, uh, uh, how do you see marrying up narratives around issues that, that still dog you? Mm -hmm. uh, education, the, the education crisis in Prince George's County with the school board, and you know all that drama, mm -hmm. right? Um, the uh, crime issue in, in the county. Um, how do you translate that as a county executive up into federal uh, policy? Is crime up in Prince George's County? Well, no, this year crime is actually down. We're down 13% this year. But what I can tell you is this. I have now the experience, practical experience, so that I don't speak theoretically in the Senate about what it requires to bring down crime. I can talk about uh, my work as a state's attorney, for example, where during the time that I was the elected prosecutor, I oversaw a 50 percent cut in violent crime. On education, we recognize, as you've mentioned in our jurisdiction, that we've had challenges for many years. I have funded education at the highest levels we've seen in our county, in the history of our county, built 10 schools in just the last three years. The business of educating children requires government investment, but it also requires families. Mm -hmm. It is a, an effort that requires all of us, and I'll continue speaking that way in the Senate when I move to make sure that we have funding so that your zip code doesn't determine the quality of your education. Title I funding, for example. I'll be able to talk about health care. Um, talk about, you know, I think President Biden has done a great job in making sure that we cap the cost of insulin. I've worked to expand health care access since I've been county executive, built the first of its kind cancer, cancer center in Prince George's County, built the first of its kind mental health and addictions care facility. So these are issues that I will take to the Senate to continue to build on the record of really investing in families and offering the first chance of success. We often hear about second chances. I believe our country owes every one of our families the first chance of success, economic investment. It's bringing the FBI headquarters. To what Maryland about the port, real quick? I know we're oh, yeah, we have to go, but I know the, the Baltimore's busy yeah, port reopened seconds. after, you know, the tragic collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And we just compliment our governor uh, on his work and our federal delegation. They got to work and worked really expeditiously to reopen that port. Uh, I look forward to continuing to work with them. I was beginning to mention the FBI headquarters and bringing that back to Maryland. I did so in collaboration with Senator Van Hollen and, and Congressman Nfume and our governor and others. And I'll look forward to working with Congressman Raskin and others uh, in the Congress, Ivy, to bring back uh, resources to Maryland to keep growing our economy. Very good.
Right. County, Prince George's County Executive, Thank Angela Olson. Thank you Thank so you much, so for, having much me. for coming in and Thank sharing you. a little bit of what's happening in the great state of Maryland. Our booking team and I have invited Larry Hogan uh, to join us here on the weekend. Larry. There's a seat at the table for you, my friend. Please come on and enjoy and enjoy the conversation with us. We're still waiting to hear back from you, bro.